Hello, nerds. Thank you for joining me here on Nerd News Clips. This is the second channel. Uh, this is the place for all of the short form content as well as the individual sections and just generally speaking, smaller things. If you are into the longer form content, youtube.com slash generally nerdy is the place to go see that. With that out of the way, let's get into this. Let's start it off with the music section. All right, in music, we have a couple of follow-ups for some things that we talked about previously. And uh, yeah, that's the definition of a follow-up, right? So first up, we uh, talked a few months ago when Steel Panther lost their bass player. It seems they have announced an official replacement. The man goes by the name Spider, kind of like Spider from uh, Power Man 5000, but definitely not the same guy. Uh, this guy was, I'm assuming, a tech for them when they were on the road, and he filled in when they had those live shows since the previous guy left, and now he's just sticking around, apparently. So... That is what we have for Steel Panther. Next is a really cool piece for Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy has finally, after being the godfather of so many genres, subgenres specifically, and the genre of metal itself, he finally has a number one hit on Billboard in America. This is a number two hit for him in the UK. The record being, of course, patient number nine. So congratulations go out to Ozzy. And honestly, check out this record. There's a couple of tracks on there that feature uh, Tony Iommi, you know, guitar player from Black Sabbath. And those tracks are absolutely worth your time. Uh, we've talked about them brief uh, briefly on the channel, but yeah, you should probably go revisit them because they're a lot of fun. Uh, but that is what we have for Ozzy. And then we have one other follow-up that technically we talked about in the live show. I just felt like it was absolutely worth it to make it into the regular show as well. Uh, Black Dahlia Murder has officially decided they will be moving forward with their current uh, replacement vocalist, former guitar player, Brian Eschbach. Uh, so he will no longer be playing guitar. He is now permanently going to vocals and filling in for for his missing guitar parts is a guitar player known as Ryan Knight. Ryan previously played with Black Dahlia, left uh, not too long ago, and is returning now to play once again with the Black Dahlia. So that's pretty awesome. After the fundraiser show for past vocalist Trevor Sternad, uh, this is going to be their lineup moving forward on tour and writing and such. So. Uh, definitely looking forward to hearing new material with this new lineup from the guys over in Black Dahlia. That is what we have for follow-ups. No corrections. Let's move into new music. We have a bunch. We have a lot of stuff we're talking about in new music. So, starting at the top, we are going with Smashing Pumpkins have released a new track. That track is called Beguiled. It comes from a new album that they have announced. The name of the album is Autumn. It's not, not spelled the way you think it is. A-T-U-M. Super simple. It is a rock opera in three acts. This is supposed to be the third of the uh, story albums that uh, Smashing Pumpkins have done. The first of which being obviously Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. The second of which being M Machina slash The Machine of God, which came out in 2000. Uh, this record, again, is going to be three acts. So those three acts each have their own release date. So the first of the three is going to be 11 album or 11 songs, rather. All three of them are going to be 11 songs long. Uh, the first of which will be released in no uh, on November 15th. The second will be released on January 31st. And then the third of which will be released April 21st. Also on April 21st is going to be a special edition that has all three of the acts as one full album, as well as 10 bonus tracks that did not make it onto the album proper for reasons only Billy Corgan knows. <laughs> but that is not what we're necessarily talking about directly. We are talking about 
Beguiled, the new song, the first single from this new record. Uh, oof. Uh, if this is supposed to be a, a sequel to Melancholy and Machina, I, I don't see it. I don't understand Billy Corgan in many ways, let alone his artsy fartsy stuff. And I mean, like, I understand artists usually. I can, I can see the, 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 the meaning and so on and so forth. I just, Billy Corgan has been one that has always eluded my grasp. So I don't know. The track is okay. It's definitely not the best Smashing Pumpkins song I've ever heard. Not by a long shot, but it's also definitely not the worst. So take with that what you will. I, I really don't know who this track is for because what I know of the Pumpkins, they haven't been that for a long time. So I don't really know what a hardcore Smashing Pumpkins fan is looking for anymore because the band has not been that for a long... I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know who to recommend this for. Check it out if you're curious, I guess. But... We're moving on. Um, next, we're talking about Stillwell. This is the new side project, hopefully, for Fieldy, the bass player from Korn, Stillwell. Uh, has actually been around for a little while. They released a new single. That new single is called Can't Stop Now. And, oh, maybe you should. <laughs> I mean, I know that's probably a tried, uh, trite joke at this point with stuff like this, but... I just, I don't understand why this is taking over Fieldy's focus when it sounds like he still wants to be a part of Korn. Korn is a much better band. Even modern Korn is better than this. I just, this is not a recommend for really anybody. This is mediocre at the absolute best. All actuality, this is not a good track at all. And from what I have heard of Stillwell, this is indicative of pretty much their entire catalog. So... Eh. Next, we are talking about the Bronx. I am a bit of a Bronx fan, not gonna lie, showing my bias up front. They have released a new track called Blowtorch. I dig it mostly. This is not, not exactly what I have come to know and love from the Bronx, though this is kind of the direction that they have been pointing for the last few years. So can't say that I am surprised. This is a little less aggressive than I want out of my Bronx records, but it is still absolutely a fun listen, kind of an upbeat kind of Southern feel to it. And I, it's still in your face, even though it's not as aggressive as they once were. It's still a lot of fun. So definitely go check this one out. Our next new track is one that I honestly haven't listened to because this is one that we will be doing. I'm going to be doing another batch of reaction videos very soon, and this is on the list to go uh, be part of that. But Lorna Shore has released a new song uh, in preparation for their new record, which I feel like they just released their last record. So the fact that they're moving into another one is actually kind of cool. I think it's uh, great that they're trying to get as much material out there with Will on vocals because their previous records each had a different vocalist. And when the, the, the previous, the very last record before Will got on, uh, when that one was released, it, the vocalist had been fired before the record was even released. So they don't exactly have the best track record with keeping vocalists for plethora of reasons, but uh, it is what it is. And the new stuff with Will is great. I, again, can't really speak to the quality of this song because I've honestly heard maybe 10 seconds of it, and that's not anything to formulate an opinion on. So we will be doing a reaction to this one very soon. Until then, we're just going to be moving on. Our next one comes from Convalescence. This is a black metal or death metal band, I guess, technically. Uh, some sort of weird, creepy death. I don't know. Convalescence, the name of the track is 79 Years. This video was filmed inside of Penhurst Asylum, and apparently that's supposed to be scary in and of itself. The visuals for the video are pretty lackluster. They're, they're stuff that I would have really been into in middle school, but I'm not in middle school anymore, so I need a little bit more substance rather than just, ooh, look, guts and blood and things. And uh, I mean, the, the track itself, the actual song is a pretty solid, deathy, little little black metal-y kind of thing going on. Uh, a lot of fun to listen to if you are into the aggressive stuff. 
This is one of those bands I definitely feel like takes themselves a bit too seriously, but they seem to be putting out some pretty decent music, so maybe go check it out. Definitely not the best example of the genre that they're trying to go for, but still pretty solid track nonetheless. Our final piece of new music for this episode comes from the immortal In Flames. In Flames have released this new track. It is called Forgone Part One. It comes from their forthcoming record under a similar name. Forgone is the name of the record. The record releases February 10th, and this track is exactly what you want from new In Flames. This is solid, solid Swedish death. It is uh, a melodic death, I think, is their technical subgenre, but I don't know. In Flames doesn't have a lot on the melody side outside of the musicianship. Either way, worth a listen. These guys are definitely a standard bearer for the genre, and I dig it. Let's move now into the tour section of music. And this is actually a very interesting tour section because neither of the things we're going to be talking about are technically tours. They're just live performances. So uh, the first one is Greg Pusciato, former vocalist for the now defunct Dillinger Escape Plan. Pusciato uh, has put out two EPs in the last year and a half, roughly. The second of which being with uh, my, uh, Marta, Maria, I can't think of her name. I apologize. I love Code Orange and her name is escapes me, but the guitarist and uh, sometimes vocalist from Code Orange, I believe the name of the track is Lowered or Low End. Again, I take amazing notes, so it's a, it's a wonder why I can remember anything at all. But uh, very interesting. This will be the first time Pusciato has performed any of his solo work live. It is a single date that has been announced. That single date is October 11th. It is at Don Quixote in LA. I don't know what that is or where that is, but there also I was unable to find any links to purchase tickets. So if you are in LA and you can go on October 11th, I suggest you do because the stuff that we've heard from uh, Pusciato since he's gone solo has all been pretty good. So definitely if you can go check it out, I just can't help you with tickets. I'm sorry. So Moving right along, our other piece of live music <laughs> comes from Umbra Vitae. If you remember, we talked about this band when they formed. It uh, features members of Converge as well as The Red Chord. And uh, these guys are going to be performing live as well. This is two dates, both of them in December. Uh, December 15th and 16th. The first date, uh, the 15th, is going to be in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The second date, the 16th, is going to be in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, just pretty awesome. I believe this is the first time these guys have played live together as well. So pretty noteworthy. That's why I put these two things as the quote-unquote tour section. But either way, great music to check out. Go do so. That brings us into regular ass news for the music section. Regular ass news, we're talking Black Braid first and foremost. Black Braid, uh, we've kind of, I've suggested his record to you a number of times over the course of the last month or so. Uh, and now he's getting a little bit of time to shine. He's going to be featured on the Pulse of the Maggots podcast, uh, hosted by P uh, Stave Puff Marshmallow, I think is what the guy goes, goes by. Um, but yeah, it's going to be on the Pulse of the Maggots website, and again, Black Braid getting his time to shine. I just wanted to bring as much spotlight to that as I could, so that's... Oh, and the date for it, because it's a live podcast, they, they record it live, uh, so you can listen to it as they're recording. October 3rd is when that is going down. Next, we're talking about new uh, record announcement from Serge Tankian. For those that do not know, for some reason, Serge Tankian, known for being the frontman of none other than System of a Down, has had a pretty successful solo career since System of a Down has kind of been on the outs with one another, and he is releasing another new EP. This one is going to be called Perplex Cities. It is going to be released October 5th. Uh, 21st, sorry, there is going to be five new songs from Mr. Serge Tankian, and I am super excited about it, even though his politics, I think, are grossly misguided in a lot of ways. I still think he makes amazing art, and I love it, love it, love it. So, uh, this is uh, really kind of surprising, too, because the last time we got new music from Serge was his last EP, which was 
two years ago. It was the Elasticity EP, which also had approximately five uh, tracks on it. So seemed to be a, a going theme with Surge and new music. Uh, but that brings us into our next piece, which is He Is Legend, a band that I honestly love a lot. They are teasing new music. Uh, new material is supposed to be released to some degree as of September 23rd. So in a couple of days, as you're watching this, uh, there is no name for whatever this new track is, but there is a tease up on their Facebook page, uh, posted to their Facebook they say, we've been playing with y'all on our IG, and some of you are very close. Anyone want to guess the new album title? Here's your hints. It's two words, four syllables, and it appeared on a previous album. So the logical options are as follows. We have The Seduction, Mushroom River, Serpent Sickness, Stranger Danger, and Eastern Locust. I think, I personally think that it is going to be The Seduction because that uh, track appeared on multiple albums. They have a variation of The Seduction for, I believe, three of their previous five records. So th that would not be a surprise to anyone really in the fan community of He Is Legend, though, again, honestly, it's anybody's guess at this point. I'm super excited to hear maybe a new single launched on the 23rd, Crossing Fingers, uh, but that is all we have for regular ass news. So, music suggestion for the week. We're sticking with the theme, man. He is legend. The record I'm suggesting to you is Suck Out the Poison. It is technically their third album, though they want to distance themselves from the first album, so they count it as their second album. And it's, it's honestly... The reason why I fell in love with this band. Uh, the I Am Hollywood is a pretty solid record, but they really hit their stride with this one, and then It Hates You, and then the the Pony one, or the Unicorn one, I can't Black Unicorn, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, this, just a solid band. This is like the middle of the peak that they hit when they were huge, huge, as huge as they ever got, I guess. And now they're just a band for bands. These, these guys are musicians that other musicians love, and I feel like more people people who aren't necessarily musicians should fall in love with them as well. So, Suck Out the Poison is your suggestion for this week. Once again, this has been just a brief segment from the larger episode that has been posted over on the main channel, youtube.com slash nerdy. Go over there for the long form content or just subscribe here if you want it in bite sized chunks. Thank you very much for joining me nerds. We'll see you in the next one. Before we go though, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.